Samir is the sports captain of a school and today he has got an opportunity to organize an inter-school football competition in his own school and where he has to invite other schools. Now he prepared a poster for the same competition which he put on the school website. After that he inquired about how many schools in his town have a football team. He came to know that seven schools in his locality have a football team. So adding his own school, he has total eight teams for which he has to organize a competition. So he started planning for the same. So he drew a round chart for them. That is, he calculated how many rounds will he have to conduct for a winner. And he saw that he has eight teams. So he paired each of them. And from these, again, he'll have one winner each. Isn't it? And again, they will have a competition among themselves. And then from here again, there will be one team each. And then from here, they will have a winner. So this was about eight teams. But something unexpected happened. Samir got a total application of 31 teams in his website. That's because a lot of other teams, apart from the eight teams which were in town, had also applied, which were basically out of town teams. So 31 teams application was already there and his own school's team was the another one. So he had total 32 teams for the competition. Now he was really confused that he definitely calculated for eight teams, but for 32 teams, he'll have to make a fresh chart. And what if the applications increase? Will he have to calculate again and again all the time? And the chart will get bigger and bigger all the time. So he contacted his maths professor. And the maths professor said that it's not a big deal. He can always use logarithms to calculate the number of rounds for any number of teams, whatever may be the number. Now, that was really interesting. But how can logarithms help us with identifying number of rounds for a game competition? <laughs> well, for that, we'll have to know logarithms better. Let's see. Now, here we have 2 to the power of 3. That is 2 into 2 into 2 is equal to 8. Now, if we had to write it in some question form, for example, 2 to the power of what is equal to 8. So, if we write it in this question form, then this becomes a logarithmic equation. How? We'll see. Now, here we have a question where it says that 3 to the power something is 27. Now, we need to find this particular value. Now, logarithm helps us find such powers of numbers which would convert one number to another number or which would give one number as another number. So, if this particular equation needed to be written in logarithmic form, what would it be? So, log of 27 to the base 3. So, base is here at the bottom and 27 is the number which you need to obtain. So, how many times 3 needs to be multiplied to get 27? So, this particular equation is written in the log form. So, you don't know this value. Now, let's see. 3, if we try to multiply, 3 into 3 is 9 and into 3 is 27. Isn't it? So, in this case, we will have answer as log of 27 to the base 3 is equal to 3. So, you see how an unknown power was solved using logarithms. This is what logarithms does. Now, do you think that this looks like an exponential equation while this is definitely a logarithmic equation. So, are exponents and logarithms related? We'll see. Now, here you have a cube. Basically, you have three here and three boxes here, which is nothing but three into three. That is three 
square which is equal to 9. So when in exponential forms, when 3 is multiplied by 3, we get 9. So from this equation, if we remove one variable or one number as unknown, then what happens? For example, I remove 9 here. So now I have a question. I have a question that what is 3 squared, isn't it? And this is usually what sort of a question? Well, it's an exponent question. So when we say what is 3 squared, it is nothing but a exponent question. Now, what if we remove something else from this equation? So in this case, we have removed the power. That is, now we don't know what power needs to be raised so that we get 9. That is, 3 needs to be raised to what power to get 9 as the answer. Now, such a question is where logarithms can come into the picture. Because when we say 3 to the power what is 9, in mathematical terms, we write it as what is the log of 9 to the base 3? So when we have this sort of a question, then we would get the answer, which is 2. Hence, we know that this is a logarithm question. Now, what exponent should one number be raised to in order to get another number? That's what we saw in logarithm question. So logarithm answers such question where you need to find the exponent so that one number is converted to another number. That is, one number is raised to what power so that you get another number. Such a question is what is solved by logarithms. So let's see an example. Now here, you see that we need to find the log of 100 to the base 10. So now that you know that whatever the base is, that is multiplied a number of times to get the argument. And that is what is the answer for such equations. So here we have the base as 10. So let's see how many times we need to multiply 10. 10 into 10 is 100, isn't it? So if 10 into 10 is 100, that means log of 100 to the base 10 that is written here at the bottom would be 2. That is, 10 is multiplied 2 times, isn't it? So we get log of 100 to the base 10 is equal to 2. So that's how you solve a log question. So let's come to the real scenario where Samir had gone to the math sir and he had asked that how would he find the number of rounds if he had a large number of teams. So math sir asked him that if he had this eight teams, how could he write them in numbers? That is, for round one, how many teams he had? So for round one, he had some eight teams. And for round two, he had four teams. And for round three, he had two teams. Now, Matzer asked him to write these numbers as powers of two. So, eight can be written as two to the power three, isn't it? Two into two into two is eight. Four can be written as two to the power of two. And two itself is nothing but two to the power of one. So that's well and good. So now, sir asked him that if he had 16 teams, how would he handle they, those? So he drew another chart. Now here he has 16 teams in the first round. And then out of them, there were winners. And then there were again shortlisted winners. And finally, the last two teams. And then he had the final winner. So in this case, again, he asked him to write the number of teams. So we have 16 in the first round. We have eight in the second, we have four in the third, and we have two in the fourth round. Now again, sir asked him to convert these into powers. So for 16, he could write two to the power of four. Similarly, for eight, he could write it as 
2 to the power of 3 and this as 2 to the power of 2 and this as 2 to the power of 1. Now sir asked him that previously when we, he had 8 teams what was the power of teams in 2. So for 8 teams it was 2 to the power of 3 and for 16 teams he had 2 to the power of 4. Now for 8 teams number of rounds was how much? Number of rounds was 3 and for 16 teams number of rounds is 4. So let's understand for 16 teams that is for 2 to the power of 4 teams the number of rounds was 4 while for 8 teams that is 2 to the power of 3 teams the number of rounds was 3. So what do we understand from here? Well 2 raised to a certain power is what gives us the number of rounds. So if the total number of teams is converted into a power of 2 then the power which 2 is raised to is what is the number of rounds which a tournament will have. So now let's see for 32 teams how many rounds will be there. So for 32 teams if we need to find the number of rounds we need to find the log of 32. So log of 32 and what will be the base? It will always be 2 for this tournament. So the base is 2 written at the bottom. So we have 2 into 2 is 4 into 2 is 8 into 2 is 16 and into 2 will be 32. That means we have total 5 2's. Right? That means nothing but 2 to the power of 5 is equal to 32. That means log of 32 to the base 2 is equal to 5. That means he will have 5 rounds in the tournament if he has 32 teams playing. Similarly for any number he can always find the log of that number of teams with the base 2 to find the number of rounds he has to calculate. So you see how logarithms really helped him in finding the number of rounds. So it has a large base of application right from earthquakes to chemicals to sports competition. Now let's see some interesting fact about logarithms. Let's say you have a question where you have to find log of 10,000. Now it looks fairly simple but there is a catch. You don't know the base. So if there is no base then how will you find how many times what needs to be multiplied to get 10,000? Well this is what we call common logarithms. So log of 10,000 the base is not mentioned that means it is 10. So you need to find the value of log of 10,000 to the base 10 which is nothing but 4 isn't it? 10 to the power of 4 will be 10,000 because it's a very simple calculation the number of zeros is the number of time 10 needs to be multiplied. So we have log of 10,000 nothing but 4. So common logarithms are written in this form that is log x equal to y. So whenever log x equal to y it simply means log to the base 10 x is equal to y. So whenever you get an equation of this form it is a common logarithm and the common logarithm has a base as 10 always even if it is not mentioned. So, can logarithms have decimal values? Till now whatever numbers we have got are very easy numbers. But what if you had something like this? Now 26 is a very easy number, a very small number as well as 10. But when you say log of 26 to the base 10 that means how many times will you multiply 10 to get 26. Now we know that 10 to the power of 1 is 10 and 
10 to the power of 2 is 100 then how would we get 26 well something raised to 10 is definitely 26 but it is a decimal value you cannot really find it with your own calculations on pen and paper you will have to usually use a calculator so if you use a calculator you will find the value as 1.41497 that is this answer will be nothing but 1.41497 or you can say that 10 to the power of 1.41497 is equal to 26 so you see even logarithms can have decimal values which can be calculated with the help of calculator so overall you have common logarithms you have decimal values but whatever values it will be there logarithms will be very helpful in solving a lot of different equations right from earthquakes to sports tournaments